every who down in Hoover liked Christmas a lot. But the chinchilla just north of Hoover did not. The chinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the week. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps their shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his head was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his head was shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the hoose. Staring down from his cave with a sour chinchy fur at the warm lighted windows in below in their town. For he knew every Huda and Hoover Relief was busy now hanging over a mistletoe reef. He snarled with a sneer. So he growled from his chinch fingers nervously drumming. For tomorrow he knew all the two girls and boys would wake bright and early, they'd rush for their toys. And then all the noise, oh noise, 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 noise. That's one thing that I hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the hoos, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding. And where who roast beast. It was suffering the chinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who died who will, the tall and the small, would stand close to death, together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the who would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the modern chinch thought of this who Christmas thing, the mother chinch fun, I must stop this whole thing. But for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The chinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. He laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clapped. What a great chintzy trick! With his coat and his hat, I was just like saying it. Oh, I needed the thing there. The chinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the old chinch? No. The chinch simply said. So he called his dog Zax, then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, then he hitched up old sacks. Then the chimp said, yeah. and the sleigh started down towards the homes where the hoos lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, all the hoos were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, the old chinchy claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the chinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Where the little who stockings all hung in a row. Me stockings. He grinned. Then he slithered and slumped with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums. Checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums, and he stuffed them in bags. Then the chinch, very nimbly, 
Dust all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned up the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, in the chinch. And the chinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove, when he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who, little candy Lou who, who was not more than two. The chinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter, who got gotten out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the chinch and said, You know that old chinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he found it up quick. The fake Santa Claus lied. And his spin fooled the child, but he patted her head. And he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Candy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the Who's still in bed. All the Who's still a snooze when he packs up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. He was chinchishly humming. So he paused and the chinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow, but the sound wasn't sad. Boy, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Newville. The chinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the chinch, with his chinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the chimp thought of something he hadn't before. And what happened then? Well, in Hillville, they say that the chinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he himself the chinch carved the roast beef.